Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and this is part number two of the Riot Busters Project Vril playthrough. We're in a campaign. This is mission number one. It's called Operation Fidget, and we've already gone ahead and successfully cleared the first room in the very first part one of this playthrough. So if you haven't checked that out, or the setup video to get to this point, or even any of the unboxings for this one, I'll definitely put a link in the top right hand corner so you can go check those out. So where we left off in the last video was we had gone ahead and pulled all the dog tags for turn order off of the different individuals from the squad and now we're going to choose which of our soldiers is going first to start off this second round. Now during this second round we've got a couple of different loot drops in the current room we're in which I'd like to be able to pick up as long as it doesn't slow us down too much because time is ticking and we do need to get out of this underground bunker area with the dossier that is the main objective not the loot even though it is somewhat enticing to go after so i'm going to go ahead here and have sarge start us off the reason is because sarge picked up a really handy grenade last time so depending on how things go going through these rooms he's the most able to clear a room if something goes a little haywire when he cracks the door and that's really all about what's going into this round two is who am i going to have actually try and open this door to see what actually sits behind it so let's go ahead and put the dog tag number one on on Sarge and Sarge is gonna go ahead and try to crack a door open. Sarge was last to go in the prior round. He definitely wants to be more at the forefront being the Sarge of this squad. He's gonna go ahead and crack this door open. This door is also a level one door and when it opens up, I'm gonna to need to roll for noise, which I'm going to do right now. We're gonna grab one white die and roll for noise. I don't get any mitigation on this one because Sarge doesn't have anything that can help him with non attack rolls based in noise let's see what happens all right so we got a single point of noise which is just enough to pull a noise card now let's find out what has happened with the noise surge has created softly does it discard one heroic point oh that's pretty bad or add two white dice to your total that's really bad so he's slowly creaking this door open and maybe it's making more noise than he really wants it to he's already got one here in the pile threshold six we need to stay underneath of that i don't have a heroic point on my characters yet during this campaign to spend unfortunately so i'm going to be rolling two white dice right now and hoping that this doesn't get progressively worse we really don't want to see the special side of these dies oh that was close okay so we got her all the way up to five and we're safe literally by just a single noise that was super close and very lucky so we're okay there so he managed to crack the door open without attracting any more attention that's good news now that the door is open we're going to draw a line of sight to the spawn token and the spawn token is going to activate so we're going to go ahead draw a spawn card find out what is showing up in this room Oh, look at this. This spawn card is just a single C. Just one soldier behind the door. That's not bad at all. And again, an awareness level of suspicious as the door is creaked open. Not fully alert just yet, but knows of something going on here. And so now Sarge, already using a basic action to open up the door, has one more basic action left. I could actually make an attack from distance here using my uh, Thompson, which would actually be pretty good. The problem 
problem is I'd be rolling three white dice after the attack, which would generate a lot of noise and likely not what we want in this mission. I could also try and use his pistol, which only rolls for two white dice from distance, but that's also pretty loud. Again, I'm trying not to trigger patrols coming at us or anyone to know we're here. So let's go to his cards and see if Sarge has anything he can do attack-wise that's a little bit more stealthy. I already talked about the fact I don't want to use Sarge's Thompson because it generates a whole bunch of noise and I don't want to use this pistol in close range either because it also makes a whole bunch of noise even though this thing is versatile and I could use it in the same space that's really handy. Again, it's all going to generate too much noise, too many gunshots, so not something I want to do with just one enemy. One thing you can do as another option, regardless of whether you're carrying weapons or not, uh, you can just use your bare hands to make an attack and when you do so you don't have to roll for any noise of course because you're just basically attacking with straight up your hands but you only get one black die which is pretty rough on the odds that things are going to go your way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use uh, sarge's last basic action to move into the room so get him into here right up against this guy i want to use that uh kind of melee attack just using my bare hands so i'll be rolling one black die but what i'm going to do is going to use one of sarge's cards as a boost and i'm going to use the bottom side of this card right here and it's called deadly and it's going to be a modifier which is going to be discarded after it's used won't generate any noise it's going to give me an automatic three successes we know these soldiers need four in order to be killed off so that gives me a much better chance of pulling this off and there's still the chance i could mess this up but i'm going to go for it and see how it pans out so let's go ahead and roll this die see how it goes all right, so we got exactly what we needed and a little bit more, which is perfect. So this soldier has been killed off. Sadly, there wasn't any special involved, so no extra loot drop, but there is some loot in this area. However, I have already used my two basic actions at this point. So unless I'm planning on using some cards for my hand for additional free actions, can't do anything else. So I can't actually search that box as the box is a actual basic action. So that's pretty much it. That sums up this room, nice cleaned out. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this awareness token and remove it and also we're going to go ahead and state that this room has also been fully cleared by the Sarge. Normally this would be the enemy turn right now if Sarge hadn't got in that room silently and basically strangled out that one enemy without them even knowing while they were suspicious. And now we're going to move to the hero turn again. I get to choose who I'd like to go because the alarm hasn't gone off. I'm going to choose to have uh, Claudine actually go second here. And Claudine currently sits right here. And she's got two options for loot she can go after. I don't have to go after any loot if I don't want to, but I'm really tempted by this. She does already have some defense uh, with a helmet on, but it would be nice to find out what else is in her spot seeing as she's all the way over there in the corner anyway so let's go ahead and just choose this one down below we're going to roll for noise and see how this pans out for her all right, one noise. So unfortunately, we did trigger some noise while rummaging around in order to find something, and hopefully this doesn't get any worse. So this one right here, ha, not good looking. So this could really get dicey, uh, to say the least. Uh, hopefully it doesn't have many dice involved when I roll this, but I'm re-rolling the original roll that I got for one. We're going to hopefully not see any specials. Ooh, almost jinxed myself there. Just two, so we're still safe. We're under the four, so the four below doesn't, doesn't actually trigger. So you can see here, eventually we are going to trigger a patrol it's going to cause us a whole bunch of grief and so far we've been very very lucky so she's rolled to gather that loot she's going to go ahead and flip it over find out what it is and oh my gosh we've got ourselves another grenade now you might think, hey, we've got lots of grenades. This is really working out in our favor. That sounds like a great thing to have, and it is. Grenades are great, but, and just as great and effective as they are at clearing out an entire room, you have to realize if I use all my grenades, if I was to use both the grenades I have on me right now in terms of items uh, on Claudine and on Sarge, then that would actually push the uh, round track up two spaces for each use, which would literally put me one away from losing the game. So yes, having grenades is good for situations when you need them. Them, but remember you're burning time when you actually use them because well you can't really go unnoticed and you know what I'm gonna have Claudine actually take another basic action right now in order to pick up the other loot in this area because I don't really want to move my uh, men or women over to that side of the game board whatsoever because we're not heading that way anyway and that would be kind of inefficient if she's already there I can get her to pick it up and if it's something really cool we can always trade it in amongst ourselves so let's go ahead and have her try to pick it up again uh, this is a different one so I guess it's not again we'll see how this dice roll goes 
Oh, we got two noise this time. We're getting a little louder the second time around. So let's go ahead and find out how this affects us. We've got muffed it. This does not sound good. So this, oh no, this one says add two white dice to your total. We're already at two. The threshold is five. So this could certainly be a problem. Let's go ahead and grab two dice. Roll these off and see how it goes. Oh, another lucky roll for us. Man, we are just doing really well on those noise rolls. So just four. We're still okay. I really thought that was the time it was going to trigger some interest in us for sure, but we're still managing to squeak by just barely. So she's going to go ahead and gain this loot. Oh, what do we have here? You probably guessed this, and yes, it is a dog biscuit. And yes, there are dogs in this game, so you can imagine this is going to help us in that regard. So what do these dog biscuits do? Well, you can discard this item to cancel the attack of all the dogs. Experiment 6XXs, which is another unit type, which currently isn't in this mission, but could come up in the future, of course. And General Wolf, another individual who's not part of this mission from my knowledge, but will likely show up later on as well, in the same area until the end of the turn. So that's pretty awesome. That could really help us out. But dogs wise, we know there's a chance we could get dogs because on the spawn cards, if we land a D, that means the dogs are gonna be coming out. So this actually could be a very, very handy item to have. So Claudine definitely has a lot of options in her favor here. She's got grenades, she's got dog biscuits, and she's got the ability to have extra defense dice with her helmet. Pretty awesome. So with Claudine's turn out of the way, we move to the enemy turn. There are no enemies still, so we jump back here to my turn to choose another soldier to activate. I'm going to choose this time to have Quentin move. We want to move Quentin a little further in, and I'm actually going to have him go ahead and pick up some cards for his other basic action. So first basic action, getting into the action in the first place. First time he's actually entered here, so now he's basically ready to go through the door very, very soon. And I'm going to go ahead and draw two cards to add to Quentin's hand. He already has five, so this will be really nice because it'll give him additional options later. Remember, he is my tactical individual, the one that is the quietest of the group with the bow from range, so I want to get him in the action as quick as possible. This is really perfect right now. I just drew this card right here. I might even just use this uh, but, and I actually can because it's a free action after I'm done drawing these, but it's move one, draw one. So why wouldn't I want to get him into a room ready to go through that next door later on? So I'll probably be using that one right away. Second card is going to be this one right here. It is what, what, and it is one of those instant action cards. Play after an enemy unit enters your tile, move one, and make an attack. Pretty cool. So you can kind of, you know, deal with enemies coming at them instantly. So let's go ahead now, after I've done my two basic actions, one move, and then the second basic action was to pick up two cards. I'm going to use a free action of one of the cards I just picked up to move one and draw. So I get to move Quentin in here, which worked out absolutely perfect. Would love to have had him try to go after this box. He just doesn't have enough basic actions to do it. We'll draw a card. The one I just used is discarded. The new card he got is Good Show. Another instant action. Play after you wound an enemy unit. Make an attack. Pretty good. I'm also not reading off the bottom portion because these are pretty self-explanatory. Most of the times they're just simply modifiers. So whatever you see at the bottom is what you gain. So in this case, it would gain that, many de that much defense, which is pretty handy in situations. So that is going to be the entirety of Quentin's turn and that worked out perfectly. Last and certainly not least, we're gonna go ahead and have Red Hawk activate as the final hero because again, there's no enemies to go in between these heroes currently. So Red Hawk needs to get in the room as well because I definitely want to have someone with range and she is great for that. So she'll move into this room with a basic action, sit in the back of the room, just ready for when that door opens up. She's gonna take some wonderful shots straight through it. But one thing she can do with another basic action is try to open up this crate right here. Now this is risky because again, when you start going for these ones that are too to noise things can cause problems when you start rolling dice that involve the chances of going to like three four and five on this dice especially with the specials so this could end up not working out for me we could end up having a patrol come through the door that hasn't happened yet but you know what i'm probably jinxing myself as i speak so before i get myself into any more trouble let's go ahead and roll these dice and see how this opens up i hope it's not too loud Oh, that was really loud. Okay, and just when you think you got everything into position for a absolutely flawless round, things change quickly. Let's see what we pull here. This could actually be quite scary. Not looking for this. And again, I don't have any skills with her to mitigate any noise, which is unfortunate. Oh, this is a problem. 
Oh no. Oh, this is good. Maybe, maybe it's good. So this one's called close call. This is going to be fun. So it says reroll one non blank. Non blank means I can reroll one of these. So I'm going to definitely reroll this one. Here's the crazy thing. I already have two noise. The threshold is three. Literally an enemy patrol is going to hear me if I get a single noise on this die roll. If I roll a blank, I will be, my jaw will hit the floor. I have nothing else to say. Okay, it rolled really far away, but it didn't get any better for me. It is a five. We have made so much noise in this room with all these heroes that there is no way they didn't hear us. And here comes our very first enemy patrol. So now we're going to talk about enemy patrols, which we haven't seen to this point, And this is going to be a lot of fun. So the very first thing that happens with enemy patrols is that some of these noise cards refer to enemy patrols coming out, like what just happened. So when it happens and when they appear, they use the following rules. I'm going to go over three major things that happen. Patrols enter through a closed non-exit door. So already you can see that this seems to be the likely one, but it could be any of the non-exit doors. And there's many of them around this particular area, so we need a little more information. The door must be the closest to the hero whose turn it is or most recently was. So in this case, it was this individual right here, Red Hawk. She was trying to open up this thing. It didn't really pan out in her favor. Now, now, just before we actually go ahead and crack the door open, she still was able to actually get this item, even though she rolled really poorly. So she is going to go ahead and pick this up to find out what it is before we go any further. And look at that, we got some defense. Probably going to need it in this situation. So again, she is going to equip that on her player board. And we'll continue on. So the first thing that's going to happen is the door is going to crack open. But I told you there was three things. So one, it has to be a non-exit door. Two, it has to be tied to the uh, hero who just recently went or turn who most recently it was. And then patrols cannot enter from a room or a corridor that has a clear token on it. So in other words, we can't have a patrol coming like through a door that's already been opened that has a clear token on it. So that's why we put these clear tokens down so that you know what's coming is coming in front of you and it also keeps track of which doors can be used for these patrols so with all that said we now know this is the door so we can go ahead and crack this thing open now there's all kinds of things that are going to happen here because as per rules we've already explained once spawn tokens that already exist can be seen or drawn line of sight through we have to spawn them so we're going to be spawning those ones as well as a patrol through the door now a patrol is going to basically be the thing starting first. The patrol is going to come through and there's two of these green tokens. And you're probably wondering why that is. Well, on the actual card itself, it had two of those green circles with one on them telling us we need to grab two of them, which means we're gonna have to pull two level one cards uh, from that spawn deck, which is gonna be, or one card that's gonna be pretty nasty and another one following it. And then a third one after that, pretty gross. So we're gonna go ahead and have these two patrols come through the door to this side. And of course they can draw line of sight. So at this point, now we can just start spawning everything. So basically we're gonna be spawning for these two and then finally we'll spawn for the one in the back as well. So this is going to get real ugly real quick. So let's go ahead and spawn this first one here in the room with us. And it is simply just an A. So that is going to be an officer. We're going to have one officer in this room. The last spawn that's going to happen inside of this room is going to be... Oh, there's some trouble. Three soldiers are coming into the room. So three soldiers, as well as an officer, will be in the room with us. So we know that that will be in there now. We'll remove these tokens. And then this last token up here, which we can draw line of sight to, is going to have two more soldiers. So we certainly have ourselves a little bit of a problem here. The awareness tokens are going to drop for both these rooms. Both of them are going to be suspicious to start. And that, of course, is going to amplify as we go forward. This is really rough because remember that Red Hawk actually ended her last basic action by trying to open up that uh, crate, which was, uh, well, good that we got some defense there, but bad that we have this many enemies we have to deal with in the same room. Problem here is... I 
I'm going to have to try to use some of my free actions or my feats on her in order to try to clear this room out. What's even worse about this is that she uses primarily a sniper rifle to do the majority of her multi kills, which is very loud, and also the fact that she can't use this weapon in close combat. So that's going to be a serious problem, meaning we're actually only going to have the knife at our disposal, which certainly limits what we can do. So I'll be going through her cards to find out how many of these guys uh, I can potentially take down. So I've gone ahead and grabbed the unit cards for the new units that are sitting in front of us that poured through the door as part of that patrol. We've got soldiers and one officer. These guys actually work together against us. It's really unfortunate. So you want to make sure you check these different abilities on them. First off, the officer has the ability coward. So basically the officer, when it's his turn on the enemy turn, doesn't want to be present in the same space as heroes and will try purposely to get out of those spaces during that enemy turn so when we eventually get there if the officer is still alive he's going to try to slip out the door he came through and back towards his other soldiers to cower away from our heroes but what he does do, which is a problem for us, is if the soldiers are in a room with an officer, this is part of the bodyguard ability on the soldiers, they actually gain plus one attack when he's in the room. He's bolstering them to do better, which is really unfortunate. And that's currently what we have in front of us in our current room, is three soldiers with an officer. Those three soldiers are gonna be attacking at a higher value, which is really not great. Uh, the other things they have to do here, especially with the officer, has to do with mainly guard points, and guard points are specific tokens that are blue and white we haven't had any yet but there's one way at the very top in a different room we might see it eventually but those abilities don't apply dug in and guard and then down here same thing for soldiers so we don't have to worry about those either so really it's just the coward ability and the bodyguard ability we have to worry about so I think I've got myself a plan as to how I can pull this off. It could be pretty crazy. This is going to be a great example of how you can use your free action cards as well as your feet cards in a chained attack to do a crazy amount of stuff you wouldn't normally otherwise do in a turn. So I'm going to be burning a lot of cards here for Red Hawk trying to clear this area up because again, as soon as my turn's done, there would be a lot of attacking coming our way and there would be the first enemy turn we've had. I don't want that. I want to try to clear it out of the way. So what we're going to do is ironically, the very first card I am going to use is going to be one called Clear the Way. And this card right here is a free action, and it says, in either order, move one and make an attack. So, Again, this does have a question mark on it because we don't know how much noise will be rolling and it's all based on which weapon I use, but I plan on using my knife, which is gonna be silent and that's on purpose. So I can move and I'm allowed based on the rule book to move out of a space with enemies into another space with enemies, no problem whatsoever. So I can go ahead and slip past this. Remember when all this is going on in here, really it's just an ensuing melee battle really was what's going on in there. These guys are suspicious at the moment, but my uh, actual sniper has She's gone back to her and straight through the exit, back to where those other two individuals are, and now she's gonna to try to attack and take them both out. Now, this one card I use only allows me to make one attack, but I'll be trying to make uh, another attack with another card in a moment here. So first off, I am gonna be using my knife as part of this attack, so it's gonna give me two black dice, which isn't a whole lot, so I might want to modify that. Now I really don't want to mess this up and I want to make sure these two enemies in this room get taken out because it's the only opportunity I have to make a ranged attack out of the room and start taking pot shots at the back of these guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a modifier card here. This one's called Tactical. It's going to allow me to have a special die immediately that automatically gives me two on a roll plus the ability to drop loot when I take this individual out if that actually happens. So that's a pretty good one to have. So we're going to go ahead and just set one of the dice to the special side to start. I am using my knife for the attack we've already got two we know to take out a single soldier we need four so let's see how this goes i'm really hoping this pans out for me this is probably the toughest roll out of all of them Oh, that's, that's way more than enough. That's overkill to the nine. So we absolutely blew this soldier away. And on top of that, we're going to get some regular loot drop in this area here, which is fantastic. So that first attack worked out perfectly. Now my focus for her is going to turn to this individual right here. And she is going to go ahead and spend another card to make another attack here. Now this is an interesting card because it's a two-piecer. So this one here again is a free action. You'll see it says move one, 
period, make an attack with plus three. Now with these types of cards where there's a divide between them, in other words, there's a period between them, you don't have to do either of these. You can pick one and choose to not do the other or vice versa. You have to do them in order, but you can choose to ignore one. So I can choose, I don't want to move. I'm happy with where I am. I'd like to just use it to attack with a plus three. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attack with a plus three. Now, the one thing I wanna do before we go ahead and make this actual attack is note the fact that again, this is gonna be a knife attack. So because the noise level on this card is a question mark, I won't have to deal with any noise. I discard it afterwards, pretty good. So I managed to have the perfect cards in my hand for this crazy, crazy, epic, heroic uh, takedown. So we got three right now. We need to get that one more to be able to take this guy out. And that's what I'm really hoping will work. So again, I'm not going to be using my gun, even though it looks like I am. I'm using my knife as it's sitting right here. I'm going to roll two black dice. I really just need one more hit to make this happen. Oh yeah, and we got the special on top of it. So technically this would actually force us to roll another die. It ends up being blank, but that's gonna allow us to drop loot on top of this. So we got tons of loot in here. Plus, we've now completely cleared out this room. Now I am burning uh, cards like a crazy person. The awareness token is now gone. So I have gone ahead and burnt all kinds of cards for my character here. I only have two more cards for Red Hawk. She's not got much left. Uh, she's got Covering Fire and Bird of Prey, but this was the plan. Plan. Now I've got the upper hand. I'm in a room and I'm going to use my feet card. One of my two feet cards that are the only two I have left in my hand. These are really powerful attacks if they work out for me well. Now I just realized something that I definitely want to clear up with you guys and that's in terms of the skill accurate. This sniper rifle has that skill and it says it right up in the top right hand corner. So what is accurate? It's actually going to be a lot more useful than I thought it was initially. Accurate attacks may draw a line of sight through areas containing enemy units. In addition, accurate attacks ignore bodyguard and meat shield. So in other words, what's really handy about this is this one talks more so about shooting through enemies so that's handy and all uh, but the one that I'm focusing on here the one that's really key is the fact that it ignores bodyguard so I can literally just snipe the officer straight away as my very first attack if I wish and I'm honestly going to choose to do that so regardless of the fact that all those guys want to guard this individual this sniper rifle does not matter I can pick my target thematically and take it down the other thing that Red Hawk has and she has available to her is focused so she's able to when she makes an attack she can actually re-roll a die which is really really handy and again that goes in with the sniper rifle so uh, may it's just one black die per attack action so What's gonna happen here is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this card right here, a feat card called Covering Fire. And this is quite an interesting one. It says it's a free action first off, then we discard it, and then it has this symbol right here we'll talk about in a second. Make a ranged attack on each enemy unit within, uh, within range in one direction. So this is my one direction. Shooting back here. If you fail to wound any targeted unit, Covering Fire ends. So this is a great card, but it's only as good as you are in terms of actually taking out units. So I'm going to try to take the officer down first. The officer's defense is actually lower than the soldier's. is only three. So it's probably a smart move to go after the officer anyway. And then start picking away at the soldiers. If I get really lucky, I can wipe this whole group of patrol out before anyone even has a chance. If I fail, then the enemies finally get their very first turn. I also don't want to forget about the fact that I want to put a clear room token down in this area as the sniper Red Hawk. She went into that room, cleared it out. No problem whatsoever. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this covering fire card and we're going to start shooting everything in sight. Now, the one thing to remind you of in terms of noise is this particular weapon does have noise. Every time I use it, uh, you'd see that I'd be rolling two white dice. How this works is while you're doing a single action card like this uh, feat card here, I'm going to have multiple opportunities to make shots. If I'm successful in taking out the officer, I'll be going after the next soldier and then potentially the next one and the next one. You would think I'd be rolling for noise for every single one of those as part of that one action when the rules actually state that when you have multiple targets like that going on or multiple noise rolls for a particular action you just take the highest one so in this case it's just going to be a two and it only happens once so it's only once per action so it won't be just kind of like cumulative and just becoming massive over time otherwise you would have thousands of enemies sp spilling through the door behind you it's 
it's still going to be loud, it's still going to make noise, but it's not going to be as bad as you think. Now what will be as bad as I think is going to be this symbol right here at the end of covering fire. That is going to actually force in this pre-alarm situation that we're in, it's going to force the round tracker up by one. It's not as bad as a grenade which pushes it up by two. It's just kind of the first level of loud noises. So. I've got that to worry about as well, but I'm choosing that this is worth it because I'm quickly able to hopefully clear both rooms out really fast and it's worth burning that round to get these guys out of the way. So let's begin covering fire and see how this pans out. I got three black dice and we're gonna be going ahead and taking our first shot at the officer right there. Remember we have one reroll that we're able to do on one of these dice, so I will definitely be using that if I need it. All right, we got ourselves a special, which is two. We got two hits right here. That's going to be more than enough. I'll go ahead and roll this off. It's a blank. So basically, that ends up, that's actually the end of my roll. I technically still have a reroll if I wanted to use it for fun, which I will. It ends up being a blank again. So no bonus there. But still, I got one, two, three, four, and it is a loot drop for the officer, which is fantastic. So we'll remove this first individual. And remember, because I did that, I'm able to continue using covering fire because I need to put wounds on an enemy to be able to continue to lay down this fire. So a loot token is going to drop right where the officer was. I'm going to continue onwards. I'm going to shift position over here. We're going to take a shot through the door at this one right here. I'll remove this other die. We're going to roll these three and see how it goes. Uh, that's a pretty heavy hit right there. So we got another special, which is going to be more loot. There's the roll for the special die, and I'll go ahead and re-roll for fun. It's another blank. Doesn't matter. It's more than enough. We kill off another soldier. This is going extremely well. This plan worked out perfectly. Now, I had to burn pretty much my entire hand of cards to make it happen, but it's going well. So now we're going to shift over here, take a shot at this one over on this side. This is pretty epic. Honestly, this is what I mean by the heroic nature of the game, where you use these cards after you've just had two basic actions you can turn something into you know you can turn a situation into something really special so we're gonna go ahead and roll again here attacking this one and see how it goes oh my gosh these are insane rolls right now i'm not landing anything bad it's just constant loot drops all day long uh, so this is another kill another easy one at that no point re-rolling any further that one is off the board, and my sniper rifle, Redhawk, she is just taking everybody down, shifting positions like lightning, and taking every single... So every threat that we had is gone. At least it appears that way. So there's, there's where we're running into a little bit of trouble. That was not a special. So two blanks and a three is what I have. I need four to take out this last one. I do have the re-roll. Please focus. Oh, no! Are you serious? That's how it's gonna end. You had your heroic moment all the way to the very end and you couldn't actually land the final kill? That's actually kind of embarrassing. I mean, that, that, the rest of that was so good. And then it's like, you just, you just, you know, you pretty much like took off his leg, but you weren't able to take him down uh, completely. So he's gonna actually have a chance to do some damage. So there will actually be an enemy turn here. Wow, that I did not see happening based on how well I was rolling there. So you can see sometimes those rolls aren't always gonna work out for you. So covering fire uh, did its job 100%. So we're finished with that card. And uh, yeah, that's a lot of loot in that room now. So this is where things get fun because remember, we still have to roll for noise for all that shooting that just happened. Plus we have to actually bump up the round tracker as well because we use covering fire. So first let's go ahead and let's roll our two white dice for the uh, multiple sniper uh, shots that happened during that action and see how this triggers the noise. I imagine this was a pretty noisy exercise. Oh yeah, it definitely was. Everybody in the bunker heard me taking pot shots all day long. Let's go ahead and grab, this is gonna be absolutely terrifying. So, oh, this one here is noise carries. It says discard two cards or add two to your total, two dice. You know what's really sad about this? I burnt so many cards in that heroic attack that I only have one more card left. I can't discard anything to stop this, so I have to roll two more white dice, and I also have no no way to mitigate this so i am literally two away from having another enemy patrol come barreling through the door behind where she is even though she did all that work yep 
it's ha oh i flipped it over by accident that was a one that is going to do it that's three four five six seven we hit the threshold she just made enough noise to trigger another enemy patrol oh my goodness just before we go ahead with the patrol, the newly spawned patrol that's coming through the back door behind Red Hawk, we have to deal with the fact the covering fire card that she used has this symbol on it, which has us moving the round tracker up by one at this point. Again, getting us closer to an alarm going off. Covering fire is not a quiet operation. So the door is going to break open here. And while that's happening, we're going to have a new spawn level one showing up it's going to come through the door into this room can definitely draw a line of sight the second it walks in the door so we're going to go ahead and spawn for it find out what it is and we've got ourselves two bees on this card so that's going to be two soldiers showing up in the room a patrol comes straight through the door into the same room as red hawk even though she thought she'd cleared everything out there are two new soldiers suspicious of the noises coming from the room now, before I continue any further, I really do want to break down those attack rolls that I just went through when I went through all of these enemies in this area and cleared out a whole bunch of them. There was a couple times where I used a special die for more than one bonus essentially so what ends up happening when you get a special die as i've been doing correctly throughout the playthrough is you always count your special dies as being plus two towards your successes which is great but you also have the ability to either choose to trigger it for an effect like a loot drop or to get a boost meaning you can go ahead and roll another die of the same type what I have done a couple times when I was taking out two of the soldiers, I believe, in this area here, was I had way more than enough hits to take it out. I had the special, I was able to put the loot, all of that's correct, but I went ahead at the end of the roll and I rolled an additional die. And I'm not talking about a re-roll that I had from a skill, I'm talking about legitimately taking a new die and rolling it. I shouldn't have done that because when a special actually hits and I land one, I get plus two and I choose, do I wanna use it for loot or do I wanna use use it to actually roll an extra die. So in all of those cases, I used it for loot. So I couldn't use it for an extra die. Now, if I happen to land two specials in a particular roll, then I could choose one of them to be for loot and one of them to be an extra die, which would roll into the pile, which would be pretty cool. Just want to clarify that because at the end, like I said, of a couple of those rolls in there, it could get a little confusing because it seemed like I was adding dice in the pool at the end. Definitely didn't need them uh, because I certainly overkilled on everything and all the loot that's currently out there is correct. So hopefully that clarifies anything in terms of the usage of specials. And while we're on the topic of dice, I might as well talk about something that happened in part number one where I used a She's a Lady card on Claudine. If you remember the very first room we entered in part number one, Claudine used this card. And at that time, I specify that this card with this particular icon right here was until basically the next hero's turn. I was mistaken. That is only the case if there's a single individual in the middle of that icon. I know it's very hard to see, but there's actually three in there. Now, if there's three in there, what it actually means is this card would stay in play until the next time Claudine activates, giving her a whole bunch of help on the defensive side with a plus two. So this would have actually helped her even more. The only thing is there was no gameplay impact whatsoever, but this is certainly worth talking about because, of course, missing out on all that defense down the road could be a huge miss. And on top of it, one other thing that I did incorrectly was when I went ahead and made my lethal melee attacks, I actually added two green dice into the attack thinking that I could take advantage of potential specials from the green dice while making an attack but green dice are for defense only so you can't actually bring those defensive dice in the whole point of them even being on the card in general as a second option inside of here as you can see this top action is a full sentence and ends with a period the second one down here ends with a period as well it's plus two green defense dice because if you have this card out in play until her next turn which of course is going to be quite some time away she's going to have plus two defense anytime she's attacked 
a pretty awesome card. So with the patrol bursting through the door due to all the noise made in the room, Red Hawk now has to check whether or not she can draw line of sight to another room. And because the door is open, she has to check this immediately. So first off, the patrol that's in this room is just considered to be in melee with Red Hawk, but doesn't prevent Red Hawk from drawing a line of sight out of the room. So when drawing a line of sight out of the room, it just goes to the next spawn token or space that it can hit and boom triggers now in the old mythic videos for the prototype this actually would have triggered all three spawns in the larger tile this is actually quite a big change so if you watch those videos and were expecting me to spawn three different spawn tokens that's no longer the case you don't get the privilege of seeing all the different enemies in the room. First off, it's not thematic. And second off, how would Red Hawk see in the different corners of the room or even past other enemy units, especially when there's a whole bunch of units right in front of her? But in terms of the gameplay mechanics, the line of sight drawing to a spawn token doesn't actually get blocked by enemies in the same space. Only enemies in a line as you're drawing it outwards, out of the room you're in. So for instance, again, as I mentioned, draw a line of sight through, hits this token, this token gets removed, spawn gets triggered, we flip the spawn card over, and two Bs. That is gonna equate to two soldiers showing up in this room. And what's important about drawing your line of sight out is whatever spawn token hits first spawns, and once those enemies are there, now the line of sight is broken and blocked. I shouldn't say it's broken, it's blocked. So from this point on, Red Hawk cannot see this spawn token and certainly can't draw a straight line to this one over here. Again, remember a straight line is north, south, east, west. In this case, Red Hawk is drawing it east. The only two spawn tokens that could even be hit would be this space right here, which is a long, tall one, or this corner right here. Not this, so not even this one here. So if Red Hawk, for instance, goes ahead and kills these two uh, soldiers, kills these two soldiers, automatically this one is gonna spawn. And of course, if, the, if Red Hawk kills these two soldiers and these two soldiers move into this space, then immediately this one will spawn. But no matter what, Red Hawk is never going to see this green spawn token in top right hand corner until Red Hawk actually moves into this space. Another thing to point out is room features. First off, we have one here in this room with Red Hawk, and this particular room feature doesn't matter what's going on around, minus the fact that the hero still has to be able to draw a line of sight to it to flip it. So actually, earlier on, when Red Hawk happened to be in this space and all of those individuals were in here, uh, there was a time frame earlier in the chaos, of which I forgot to do, was to flip that over and show you guys. But I was so much dealing with all the craziness, didn't flip it over until now so just so you're aware as soon as you can draw a line of sight to this thing very similar to how those spawn tokens we just talked about would spawn you can flip this over and the reason you're going to want to do that as early as possible is there's likely going to be something on it that's very helpful so in this case this one says while it's in this area you may take a basic action to look at the top three cards of the spawn deck discard one and put the others back on top of the deck in either order it's called patrol schedule so we basically found a patrol schedule inside the office desk which is very thematic because it's certainly going to help us control the craziness that is likely to ensue as things go on so that's something as long as I actually have a hero inside of that room with a basic action to spend I can do to very much mitigate that spawn deck all right, so we've gone over the spawn tokens in terms of how they trigger, triggering based on line of sight, ensuring there's no blockage of that line of sight. Also important that heroes can draw line of sights to room features, and as soon as they do, they're able to flip them over. I showed you an example of what not to do by waiting way too late to flip that room feature over, which only hurts me in terms of options. Now we're gonna go ahead and resolve the rest of the major room right here, which is as soon as I put these guys out and spawn them from the spawn token, I need to set the the room's awareness level and as we talked about before as long as the enemies that show up can draw line of sight to a hero they immediately will raise the room level in awareness up from at ease to suspicious now i want to talk quickly about the first room that we dealt with in part one I'm sure you guys remember in part number one when we stood outside the entrance door right here, opened this door up to reveal a spawn token which was sitting right here. 
few soldiers showed up. We also made the room suspicious immediately because those soldiers could draw a line of sight to the hero. So the entirety of the room was suspicious with a yellow token right here, very similar to what we just did with the other, other major room. Now remember, there was also a spawn token over here which did not trigger correctly um, because again, there's no way line of sight can be drawn off on the side until somebody moves into the room, one of the heroes. So basically, Quentin made some shots from this doorway or entrance tile just off screen into this area here, killing off all the enemies. And what I did was I took the suspicious token away. Now, technically, I thought this was correct based on the written rules, and I'm looking for Mythic Games to clarify whether or not that's true. But thematically, I also think that it's possible that that room level is actually supposed to stay at suspicious, regardless of the fact that I wiped out this first tile. Because thematically, this spawn token, even though it hasn't spawned yet, would certainly be aware of the fact I just wiped out a bunch of units right in front of them. They'd already be suspicious still and potentially could be moved to an alert mode in the future if they happen to actually spawn. So I should have left that room as suspicious is my guess. I'm double checking this with Mythic Games to ensure I'm doing that correctly. That is how I'm gonna progress through this second major room and then we'll go forward with that. If I happen to be incorrect, then I will let you guys know in a pinned comment, but that's currently up for clarification right now. Based on the way the rules are written, it says, it is easiest to understand this awareness rule if you think of the room or a corridor having a particular level of awareness rather than in the individual units themselves. And it's that wording that makes me think that regardless of the units being the actual miniatures brought out, the room would stay at its awareness level until, of course, it goes to all clear because you've wiped everything out. So with all that summed up, we're gonna go back into the game flow with Red Hawk's turn. I used a ton of cards. I did a whole bunch of heroic stuff, but wasn't able to completely clear out this room with her. Uh, she ended up in this room. We ended up dealing with the room feature in that room. We ended up having a patrol come through the door because of the noise made. We also had more individuals spawn over here. All the awareness levels are currently at suspicious, so that's a lot of fun. We're getting close to the alert stage for sure. I only have one more card left that I could potentially do on Red Hawk's turn, or I have to just call it quits and that's a move one make a plus one black die armor piercing lethal which are some fun keywords ranged attack of course it's a really really loud shot and completely unnecessary at this point with this many enemies out so i'm going to hold on to that card for later or just never use it because this is supposed to be a stealthy mission and that just seems like a really bad idea so what we're going to do is we're going to actually stop right there and guess what we're going to move into our very first enemy turn ever First step of the enemy turn is to raise the alarm. When we're in the pre-alarm world, which we definitely are in for the entirety of this mission one, is once we hit the alarm, we fail or lose. Uh, if any enemy units are alert, advance the mission tracker by one round. So that's pretty bad. It's just a general thing. If any enemy units are at the alert stage, we would push the tracker up by one. That isn't the case. We can skip past that safely. Next thing to check for is action stations. All alert enemy units on the map move. Do this in the order listed on the mission's faction card. And in the post along game, all enemy units are alert. So that's pretty nasty. Of course, obviously if the alarm goes off, everyone's considered to be alert and everyone would be constantly moving all the time. In this case, because they're just suspicious of what's going on, we're a little safer for now. The next thing that happens is kill the intruders. All alert enemy units that can attack do so. Do this in the order listed on the mission's faction card. So again, we can skip past this because no one is alert. Last thing we do is check for awareness. So check to see if any heroes are in a line of sight of enemy units. And then at this point now, we would check levels of awareness and adjust them. So guess what's happening here? We've got an alert enemy for sure in this room now. These guys can see him no problem. These enemies can definitely see into here as well. So this room is also going to become alert. And there's an enemy in this room and they can see these ones. So this room is going to become alert. So we've got a lot of problems to deal with now. Heading into the end of round phase. And now we're going to go ahead and have every player with fewer than five cards drawing a card as we know from before. So Sarge will get one. So he got himself tactical boost 
boost and suck it up. One hero on the same tile may discard a permanent wound. That sounds pretty awesome. Red Hawk gets a card. Red Hawk only has one card, so it'll be nice. Uh, make up to two lethal ranged attacks. That sounds like something that could be totally useful. However, really loud. And then another modifier down here for Vicious. Let's see what Quentin and Claudine get. Claudine has less than five cards, so we'll definitely draw one. What do we have here? Play after you draw a wound card, move one. That's kind of a triggered reactionary icon. And then we've got ourselves a boost, a tactical card. So that's going to come in handy. And Quentin actually has seven cards in hand, waiting for the perfect storm to unleash a whole ton of pain, but will not be able to pick up a card right now. The mission tracker advances by one, getting closer to sounding the alarm. And as always, we collect the turn order tokens or dog tags to get ready for the next round. And that's going to conclude part number two of the playthrough. Join me in the next video as we try to get our squad closer together. Hopefully in that particular episode, we can get Claudine from the very first tile up with the rest of the squad in order to help deal with all of the alerted guards that are now aware of our presence. We're getting ever closer to the alarm triggering with our main objective still being to get to this major room tile here and get the dossier off the ground by picking it up and then heading to the door and getting out in time. We're certainly getting into crunch time here and I'm really excited to see whether or not we can pull this off. Should be exciting. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo.